Hey friends, so in the past few months we have covered a variety of stalls, from bottom stalls to down stalls and up stalls. And today we are covering that most elusive of all of them. That's right, we're covering top stalls. Drex here from DrexFactor.com, teaching you poise spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. And today, we are reaching the top of the mountain when it comes to our stalls. Before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow Toys, Pyroterra Light Toys, LMF Props, Spin Balls, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all of these amazing companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. So this week we are back in my home studio both because the weather has not been cooperating terribly much and also because the past few weeks there's been a lot of really high winds and it's driven me crazy in terms of trying to get clean audio and everything. So uh, not only is this a more controlled environment to shoot in, but it's also kind of perfect for learning stalls and all the things associated with them, right? So we very slowly over the course of the past like two and a half months-ish have been learning each of the stalls kind of in the order of difficulty that I think that they tend to be in for people learning. Um, bottom stalls, of course, being so close to pendulums that they might as well be pretty much the same thing. And then, of course, down stalls, which we learned in our first week of tutorials. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we learned how to do our up stalls because they are instrumental in learning how to do anti-spin flowers, right? Well, as I've said in all my other stall videos, I tend to think of stalls as kind of being almost like a box. And this means that there was still one side of the box that we hadn't covered yet, and that is the very top of the box. So just as like a quick refresher to talk through how I visualize stalls, um, I tend to think of there being like this circle that the poi head is traveling around and there happens to be a box that's inscribed around it. Each of the corners of the box is a place where you can put a stall. And of course, there's two different ways that you can approach each corner. Uh, for example, this uh, bottom corner right here, I can access with either a bottom stall or a down stall. Same with the other bottom corner, bottom and down. Right? And likewise, we have these two top corners here, which the upstalls that we learned just a few weeks ago are a great way of approaching them from the bottom. But there's also this line along the top that we need to learn as well. And this is where top stalls come in. And fortunately, they're the last step in the process. So we're finally completing the box. And let's be real here. This is that stall that, uh, Gravity is not helping you. Gravity is doing everything it can to make this difficult on you. And I apologize in advance because you're going to need to learn some new things about how to time the stall of a poi in order to be successful at this one. So again, to review theory on how exactly you do these stalls, um, you want to move your hand right as it passes by this vertical line that goes through the center of you, right? Uh, basically, as the poi head reaches the end of that line, if your hand moves straight out along it, the poi head is going to be moving in a straight line towards that corner. Now, when your hand and poi reach both edges of the box and everything, then the momentum of the two will cancel each other out. And you can just pull your hand straight back where it came from in order to shift the direction of the poi, like so, right? Now, it's one thing to say that, and it's another to actually do it. But fortunately, I do know a few tricks for getting these down. Okay, so we can start to work on this by, say, working on our up stalls and starting to point them further in towards ourselves here. Uh, this is going to mean that we're sliding our hand slightly out further away from our sides than the heads wind up being. You'll remember from our lesson on up stalls that our goal was to try and get our hand directly beneath the poi. Well, now we are actually trying to get our hand further out, and you'll notice that I'm raising my hand just a little bit as I'm doing this. Uh, the reason for this being that you do need to have that point where uh, the movement of the hand and the movement of the poi head wind up at a right angle in order to cancel each other out and everything. And as you're working on these diagonals and everything, you're going to find that your hand is going to start moving out in a diagonal instead of in a straight line, right? Which, you know, to be perfectly frank with you, being able to do these diagonal stalls is a good uh, skill to have anyway, right? And then as you feel more and more comfortable with them and everything, you can dare yourself to try and get your hand just a little bit higher next to the poi head each time. And eventually you should be able to get to a point where the poi head is going to be more to the side of your hand than it will be above it, right? Another great method for learning this is what I like to call the catch method. And that basically entails 
putting out your opposite hand and trying to see if you can stall the poi into your hand. Ideally, either you just shoot it straight into the hand or you stall it like maybe a half an inch above it and let it just drop in and everything. And then you can pull your hand and poi back out, right? Uh, the idea here is that number one, it is really, really great as kind of like a target practice kind of thing because you are basically learning how to be more precise in your stall placement and everything. And number two, it's going to normalize the feeling of, you know, getting that poi head and your hand along a horizontal line for a top stall, right? Um, a little bit harder going the other way, but if you learn it one way, it does help in getting it back the other way, right? Okay, so when you get pretty comfortable being able to catch it and let it go and everything, I want you to change the angle of your hand and instead of having it be like a little cup to catch the poi in, I want it to be like a straight wall for it to hit. And this time, you're gonna try and tag it and pull your poi head back out. Tag it and pull it out. Tag it and pull it out. Tag it and pull it out. What we were doing when we were catching it before is we were just getting used to the placement of it and everything, but placement is not the only piece of this equation. We also have to get the timing down. The timing is incredibly tricky. So now that's what we're working on. We're working on the idea of as soon as we've made contact, it's time to bug out and get our hand back out. Uh, really think that as soon as you feel the touch of the poi against your hand, the other hand is already pulling the poi back out. And you can see that I've got just a little bit of slack on the tether and everything thing as I'm doing this, but by and large, you are trying to make sure that you get out before the poi head can drop back down, yeah? And also, one thing to note here is that it's going to be really easy when you stall it to just have it like drop underneath your hand and everything. I really want you to think that after you stall the poi, your hand is pulling back out to the side and tugging slightly up on the poi head in order to get it to swing over it as it comes back out of the stall, yeah? Cool. Cool. So after you can do this in such a way that you can execute 10 of these, tagging your hand and coming back out, tagging your hand and coming back out, tagging your hand and coming back out, without missing or dropping the poi head and everything, try doing it without the hand. Tag the non-existent hand and pull it back out. Tag it, come back out, tag it, come back out, tag it, come back out, yeah? See if you can execute the same move without your hand having to be there for you to hit in order to make it happen. And it's here that I'm going to give you another tip that a friend of mine gave me years ago that is probably the single most helpful tip I have ever gotten in terms of not only nailing top stalls, but also making them look clean. So it starts with clearing up a misconception. Namely, when we do the top stall, I think a lot of us are expecting it to look like this. Namely, uh, I have the tether more or less horizontal as as the poi head and the hand are at the exact same elevation, right? You almost want to think of this as like, okay, so if I stuck a, a, a level underneath it and everything, it'd be perfectly balanced, right? This is where you want the head and tether to be when you're doing a top stall, right? Wrong. Actually, the ideal spot to land in is with your hand an inch or maybe two above the poi head. In fact, if I show you some slow motion footage right quick of me doing these top stalls, you'll quickly notice that every single time I get to that top stall, it is not perfectly flat on top. But the thing is, is that as I'm doing these top stalls, I'm getting in and out of them so fast that it's impossible to tell that. This is one of those cases where you're doing something that's kind of an illusion, but your audience has no idea. Now, technically speaking, I could do the totally flat version of it, but as you can see, I don't get much hang time when I do. If instead I allow my hand to do that thing where it winds up a half an inch above the poi head, I can hang out here for a half a second longer. And quite frankly, not only does it make it look more clean, but it also makes it look like it's defying gravity. So as you're doing these stalls, really shoot to get your hand just a hair above the poi head as you're coming to the end of it, yeah? And quite frankly, also this makes it easier for pulling back out because since your hand is already above the poi head, it's going to already be pulling the poi head slightly up as you're pulling your hand out and everything. So really, this just makes your life easier the more you execute it. So if there is one thing that I can point to that the majority of people that I have taught this trick to over the years have stumbled on, it is definitely the timing. It is definitely the feeling of trying to find the spot where you've let the poi go far enough that you get a nice stall out of it, but not far enough 
enough that it just continues to go underneath your hand and everything. It's a really, really tough balance to try and shoot for. But what I can tell you is that if you are continually doing it in such a way that the poi head is still above your hand, it means that you need to wait just a little bit longer to complete the stall. If on the other hand, the poi head is going, is, uh, swinging underneath your hand as you're trying to do the stall, then it means that you're trying to do the stall too late. Try and find the nice Goldilocks zone between those two extremes, and that should help you find the timing on getting these stalls down. Cool, so let me show you this in slow-mo. <laughs> Outstanding. You've got all your stalls under your belt now. Hooray! So there's a lot of cool things we can do with this and we're going to spend the rest of the week exploring them. If you're running into any challenges learning this or you get it done and you'd like to show it off, pretty please post video of yourself doing it online to either Instagram or Facebook and tag me. I'm DrexFactor on Instagram and DrexFactorPoi on Facebook. I would love to see your work and I will try and give you feedback if you ask for it. Also, if you are getting all this stuff down and you want to jump ahead and find some other cool things to work on, uh, you can always try try one of the courses on my learning site at learn.drexfactor.com. In particular, I recommend my Beyond the Basics course because it gets you into intermediate territory and it covers some things that I won't be doing in this series, such as like behind the back tricks and giants. And uh, all of my courses are available during the quarantine for half off using the code COVID-19. Uh, you can use that at checkout to get half off the price of the course and everything to help your POI journey continue, yeah? Please make sure to like share, subscribe, and comment because doing all these things helps other people find my videos and that helps our community grow. And if you're enjoying this project, me uploading a tutorial a day during the quarantine, uh, please consider signing up to support it at Patreon, like all of these nice folks did. Uh, Patreon is what has allowed me to navigate a global crisis where most of my friends are having their gigs canceled left and right, and it's given me the flexibility to upload a video every single day during the quarantine, which we are now on week 11. Oh my goodness. Anyhow, if you have the means to support this project, then I totally understand if you don't. But if you do, please consider signing up to support it over at patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi. You can get early access to all of my content as well as a say in what topics I pursue in the future. Plus there are some cool extras that I post up there every once in a while, yeah? So go check that out. So now that you know all four of the stalls, we are going to learn a drill tomorrow that is the single greatest drill that I have ever found for making sure that you're practicing all of your stalls evenly and everything. It is probably my favorite poi drill of all time. So tune in tomorrow to see that and uh, I can't wait to see you then. Peace. <laughs>